We sat there in silence for what felt like an eternity. Every creak, every gust of wind unnerved us. I wanted to pack up and leave, but my girlfriend was against the idea. We waited a little while longer and eventually heard sirens in the distance. I immediately breathed a sigh of relief. There was a knock at the door soon after. The relief I felt quickly turned to paranoia in my tired state. I was still afraid that these people could be anyone. They could be our neighbors down the street or the very police officers asking us to answer the door. I peeked through the peephole and seeing the police officers' sullen faces somehow put me at ease. I worked up the courage to open the front door and the two police officers introduced themselves as Officers Jenkins and Henderson. I immediately began to blurt out some incoherent word vomit. I sounded insane talking about a group of men chanting and praying outside of our house. They eventually managed to calm me down and I began to explain the situation clearer. They were perplexed by what I was saying and looked at me as if I were mad. They entered the house and saw my girlfriend on the bed shaking nervously. Jenkins directed me towards the living room, while Henderson calmly began to speak with my girlfriend. I sat there in silence for a little while before Henderson returned from the bedroom. He whispered something to Jenkins before he spoke to me. He told me that my girlfriend had confirmed my story. I did not like the way he sarcastically sounded out the word story when he said it. It was as if he were mocking me. The two police officers sat at the dining table and asked me to start from the beginning. I explained absolutely everything to them in as much detail as I could. It was dark outside when we saw the man, however, so I did not have much of a description to give them. I could make out basic features, but not enough to give a vivid description. I could not even remember how many of them were there. I told the officers that the man had left a box outside and Henderson motioned to Jenkins to check it out. He re-entered the house a little while later, slightly out of breath and a little bit more frantic than before. Uh, you need to see this, he said in a cracked voice. Okay, I will be right back. Stay inside, Henderson said to me in an assertive manner. Officer Jenkins glanced me a worried look as they exited the room. I sat there momentarily before curiosity got the better of me. I told my girlfriend I would be right back and headed outside. She had calmed down a little at this point and was on the phone with her mother. There was an unpleasant smell in the air as I exited the house. It got stronger and more gag-inducing as I got closer to the box. The box was around three to four feet in length and quite shallow. The lid had been removed and the two officers were standing next to the police car in the driveway. Jenkins was pacing next to the car 
While Henderson was calling in for backup, I focused my attention back towards the box and walked closer to look inside. I stumbled back initially as I thought there was a person inside of the box. Inside of the box was what looked like a handmade doll of some kind. It had a head but no features on its face. It was crudely made with one long arm at the side and the head was coming apart from the neck. It was dressed in a white disheveled wedding dress and surrounded by dark decaying flowers that filled the remainder of the box. The dress itself had been slashed around the chest area, cutting through the stuffing of the doll, creating a large hole. The surrounding chest area of the dress was covered in what I can only assume was blood splatter. Carefully placed inside of the hole was a heart. It was almost certainly an animal's heart, but it immediately made me gag. I jumped as I heard Henderson shout over to me. He frantically ushered me back inside of the house and told me to wait inside and lock the doors while they searched the area. He was much more serious this time. I locked the front door as he requested and sat next to my girlfriend in the bedroom. She asked me if everything was okay and I replied that it was. I did not mention the box as there was no need to worry her any more than she already was. A couple more police cars arrived shortly after that and we were told to remain in the house for the time being. We stayed inside for a little while before being asked if we had anywhere else we could stay for a few days. I was more than happy to get out of that house for a little while and one of the police cars escorted us to my parents' house, which is a 15-minute drive. We arrived at my parents' house around 4 p.m. UK time. We had not slept for over 24 hours and were pretty out of it when we arrived. After briefly explaining the events to my parents, we locked ourselves in one of the bedrooms and tried to get some sleep. I must have passed out shortly after, because when I woke, the sun was rising through the darkness. There was a soft knocking coming from the bedroom door. I was alarmed at first, until I heard my father's voice. He told me that the police were here to ask a few questions and asked if I felt up to it. I gently closed the door to not wake my girlfriend and headed downstairs. The two police officers from before were standing at the foot of the stairs and asked to speak to me in private. We apologize for bothering you so early. We conducted a search of the area and we need to ask you some questions, Henderson said in a much more official capacity than before. Okay, what is happening? I quickly rebutted. We need to show you some photographs. Can you identify anyone that looks familiar? Henderson said. He opened a small plastic folder and removed an array of photos. They were all pictures of women. They looked like stock photos that were pulled from the internet. The photos were professional grade quality and the women were all dressed in either evening gowns or wedding dresses. I gulped as I scanned my eyes over the women's faces. Their faces were contorted into a fearful gaze. They looked tired and beat up as they stared ahead. The majority of the women were hunched over and had bruising on the parts of skin that could be seen. 
What is this? I said as I raised my head, disturbed at the images. He glanced at his partner for a moment before turning back to me. We conducted a search of the area last night. In the early hours, we searched the barn in the field behind your house. Inside of the barn, there seemed to have been what I can only describe at the moment as religious activity. These photos were found among others. We are attempting to identify the women in these photos at present. Religious activity? I said. He once again glanced at his partner before taking a deep breath and exhaling. We cannot divulge any more information at this point. We will need you and your girlfriend to come down to the station to make an official statement when you feel up to it. We will contact you if we need anything more from you. We have police cars patrolling the area just in case. They got up to leave before Henderson turned back towards me. I should not be saying this. We found pictures of you and your wife dating back to last year. The photos were taken from a distance and it seems that these people had been watching you for a little while before making contact. None of this was hidden, so I assume they did not care if the barn was found. I strongly suggest you remain here for the time being and do not return to the house. I nodded back at him as it was the only response I could muster. I sat there in silence after they left, trying to wrap my head around the whole situation. If they had been watching us for months, why had they not made their move sooner? They would have had countless opportunities in the past where my girlfriend was alone in the cottage. She would also go for long early morning runs through the field. Were the women in the pictures once in similar situations? I also have no idea what the doll means. I have a million questions, but no answers. If anyone can enlighten me on any of this, I would appreciate any help I can get. We are going to stay at my parents for the time being, as it is in a more residential area. It is a detached house, but the neighbors are all a stone's throw away. We have both taken some time off of work, and I will update if there are any more developments. These people do not seem to be going away anytime soon.